Hello, regular knife people. Regular knife guy back for another episode of the regular guy's uh, knife channel today. Um, obviously, sitting before you is not the uh, the rat two or the uh, the parts thereof. Um, we've had some uh, some shipping delays, uh, being being that I inadvertently ordered some uh, some handle material for it, but I ordered it from 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 Canada. And and this time of year, the uh, the sled dogs have a have a hard time pulling the sleds there for the for the Canadian post. I don't I don't <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I can literally order something from Australia and get it a week faster than if I order it from Ontario. Literally Canada, I I, I feel for you guys up there. You have you have the slowest postal system on this planet. <laughs> Instead tonight, I thought we would do you know kind of a kind of a holiday special, right? You know, some some uh, you know, and 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 have an intermission episode if if if, if you were. Uh, and I thought we would take a take a look back at a knife, one of the first knives that I did really I did I modded, you know, at at least more so than just just a scale change out. Um, this is back when I was still doing the old uh, uh, you know blade in a Gatorade bottle with a handful of rocks uh, stone wash method and I was never I'm never never been really happy how the uh, how the finish came out so so there's some scratches in here that are just yeah that look kind of terrible so so we're gonna try redipping it and then uh, restone washing it and see how that turns out um, I'd also like to do a uh, put a choil in up here and uh you know there's some uh you know just just a bunch of little stuff there's some i think i think the blade is hitting the back spacer um this was if you guys can see it there this is so i made i did the back spacer for this knife it was a uh, literally it was the cheapest titanium uh pm2 back spacer i could find it was one of those geared ones that sit real proud of the scales and i, I ground it down flush and then i texturized it and then uh, anodized it that kind of um uh you know it, kind of the antique bronze color along with the uh, pocket clip this is an actual nice pocket clip this is one of the uh the rips garage techs i texturized that and anodized it as well as i uh, uh installed a full set of um flytanium hardware um i've i've tried it out on just this one screw but but they the flytanium hardware does sit kind of proud on these scales, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to open the uh, the uh, that bevel up a little bit to help hopefully help get them screws down flush. Uh, I also want to uh, uh, blacken the inside of the the inside of the scales, and then just do a little bit of deburring on them and, and whatnot. But but I really need to fix that clearance issue with the uh, backspacer, um, and and yeah, because this this set of scales I, I really I I, I I built this knife around these scales. I got—I was fortunate enough. I got a Blade HQ exclusive uh, PM2 Tonto, which is you know the perfect you know perfect knife for these scales. Um, and, and and I ordered these. These come from a, from a shop on Etsy, uh, Wabi Sabi uh, Craftworks, uh, and they they do absolutely amazing work. I mean, absolutely beautiful. Um, Javier, who, who who's generally the individual you deal with when 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 you're talking to to Wabi Sabi uh couldn't ask for for a nicer guy um they're extremely responsive with uh with emails and getting back to you um the scales took took right out about about a month and a half right out about six weeks um but but he was sending me update emails you know weekly at, at the minimum the whole time and at no time did i feel you know like like i might have been getting ripped off they 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 do an, an, an excellent job the scales are made to order um, so they so it so it does take a little while the upside to that is, is any of the scales or the patterns that you see on his uh, in his uh, Etsy shop that are out of stock he can he can just make them right so so yeah it's quite a bit on there a couple he sports couple spider co's pm twos pm threes or para threes the um, I think he does um, for <sighs> Yojimbo's um, there's a few, he's got a few knives. He's also doing them now for the, uh, he's also doing them now for, uh, for, for some Chavez's. Um, and I spoke with him just the other day about possibly doing one for the, uh, XM 18s. Um, so, so really he said, yeah, no problem. I just got to come up with what, uh, what art, artwork I want to put on it for, uh, for my XM 18. 
but they are an absolute fantastic fantastic gorgeous uh you know piece of kit i, I absolutely love them um yes they're heavy you know they're brass that is what it is but <laughs> you know not the knife you're going to shove into your your jogging pants pockets but like i said if you're if you're a grown-ass adult you know you probably shouldn't be wearing jogging pants to anywhere but the gym anyways uh so yeah so yeah we're gonna we're gonna get this thing uh taken apart uh, i'm gonna gonna try to uh to 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 uh, uh you know remove a little bit from the countersinks hopefully to get these screws just just fyi the stock screws fit fine the stock screws did sit down into the countersinks just fine it's i just had kind of a problem with them sitting slightly proud because i went with the flytanium instead of the instead of the stock screws so so not a design issue this is just a an incompatibility with uh, aftermarket hard, hardware kind of kind of issue uh you know so yeah so like i said too i'm going to blacken the inside of the scales uh you know so i i, I think that'll help help the design pop a little bit and for that i'll be using the uh the excellent birchwood casey brass black um you can also use uh there's a product called liver of sulfur uh, that that that's that that will turn your your brass black as well as uh, uh egg yolks will, will turn your brass black um i like the birchwood casey product because it it doesn't smell like a wet fart <laughs> And, and that's, that's, you know, that's the main reason I use the Birchwood Casey stuff. But any of the other two work just fine with it as well. As I'm sure there's another half dozen methods out there on, on, on the YouTubes on, on how to turn your brass black. So, yeah, so I think really the first thing I'm going to do to get started is we're going to get this thing taken apart. And I want to check that clearance. I want to get, get, get at least a show side scale off so we can check that interference out and see if, the, if in fact, that, that, that low point on the Tonto is in fact hitting the uh the backspacer and then we'll have to remedy that uh if i remember right these guys were all t8s t8s and, and then we'll get the screws out and we'll be doing some countersinking and so yeah but yeah this is one of my earlier mods um you know i hadn't i hadn't gotten my uh my stone wash slash acid etching skills down and so I'd really like to try just see if I can re-etch it. I, I would prefer, you know, not having to polish out the old etch first. And, and so we'll dip it and, and, and see if it kind of repairs it. And then go ahead and go ahead and tumble it for a while. But, um, yeah, I'd, I'd much prefer not having to polish this, this blade out if, if I can get away with it. But, yeah. So I went with the Flytanium, you know, hardware. There's much cheaper hardware out there, but I prefer to use the titanium hardware that uses the stock uh, uh, pivot. I, I really don't like using those titanium pivots. I don't trust them. Um, not that I have any firsthand knowledge of them not being being good. I just, I don't trust them. But yeah, here's the inside of the show show scale. So you can kind of see the all the milling, you know, that went on. This was definitely done on a machine. Um, gorgeous gorgeously made um and it just did an excellent job the carving on that is is you know that is absolutely first rate so but we're going to blacken the inside of this just to add some contrast there's also a little bit of sharp edges right here um and we'll knock those down too with a file too just to just to take them out so you can see i acid washed the liners uh, i like kind of like how that turned out obviously from use it's you know we've gotten some a little bit of scratching on it, no big deal. So let's see here. Yep, you can absolutely see it. So the very tip of the Tonto here is contacting that center spacer there. So we'll have to grind that out and remove remove that uh metal so it doesn't do it let's see if it's damaged the blade any yeah there's a bit of chipping there so we have to resharpen anyways after doing an acid etch so not a big deal washers are good and shiny and yeah so we'll get this thing apart and then uh I think we'll work on the scales first and we'll, we'll go over cutting the doing the 
cutting those out for the holes out there for the screws. Kind of a trick to it. You want to use countersinks are one of those things where 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 we always end up going really cheap on them, and and you really ought not to. You really should put some a little bit of money and effort into them. Um, I like to use a quarter inch countersink for for most of your knives. Um, I use an an Irwin brand uh, high speed steel countersink. I think it was like fourteen bucks, which you know, when you can pick them up for two bucks at Harbor Freight, it seems a little bit ludicrous. But yeah, when once you've used it, you'll you'll know why you spend you spend a little bit of extra money to uh, to get a decent one. Um, I ha I like to use it in my uh, in my um, Max Ace uh, driver because it has a cullet uh, a bit retention system as opposed to just the the magnet. And so it holds on to that quarter inch round shank uh, a bit really, really well. So we'll finish getting this guy apart here. I'll get out the uh, countersink, take a look at that. And yeah. So this is the countersink bit. It's got a quarter inch shank. It fits that uh, Max Ace driver just fine. And then you can tighten the collet down. Um, so you just, you know, you want to get it in there by hand and, and, and give it some turning. Now... I try to avoid using power tools for this because I mean it doesn't take much to remove a little bit of metal and 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 removing metal is easy it's putting it back is the is the hard part so you know I, I try to do it by hand you know unless it's you know really egregious and it does require a lot of metal then uh, and then I'll uh, I'll switch over to a power tool but all right, let me get this finished. I'll get the uh, I'll get the countersinks all cleaned up here, getting now all that hardware uh, fit and flush, and then I'll bring you back once this is all cleaned up, and we'll we'll do the the the, bla the uh, brass blackening. All right, I'll see you in a minute. All right, and we're back. So I got all the uh, countersinks cleaned up. Um, you can see there's a little bit of. Let's see if we can see that. You can see where I just that little bit of shiny brass in there where I ran those countersinks. Um, it's a very this is a very useful tool to have um, you know if you're if you're you know if your level of modding is just doing a scale swap or maybe some after aftermarket uh, uh, hardware I, I have found you know I have always had an issue with maybe one or two of the of the, the body screws you know standing slightly proud you know of their countersinks there in the scales and this little tool right here just cleans it right up um, you know, I, I don't feel the need to chuck it into a drill, um, just, just by putting it into a, into a handle here. Um, before I, before I was, before I had it in this, uh, uh, in this, uh, Max Ace, uh, driver here, I had it, I just, I pushed it into a, a handle that are, you know, one of those wooden handles that are made for, uh, that are made for files. I just found one that had a hole that was kind of close and I put a couple drops of super glue on it and pushed it in there and that was fine. Um, I just I just put it into the uh, Max Ace here to be fancy, and then you know, to justify the fact that I spent 70 bucks on this thing. <laughs> and and whereas it's a good driver, it does its job. I don't like changing the bits out because it's got this this screw tight you know call it system for holding the bits in. But it, but for driving the countersinks, this thing works awesome. So so that's usually what I use it for now. But uh, but yeah, just uh, just just do yourself a favor. Right, don't get that big fat general purpose one that you see at Home Depot for a couple of bucks or at the Harbor Freight for a couple of bucks. Get you the smaller size, get you get you the quarter inch size, um, and, and get you a quality one. Like I said, this one's made by Irwin. I think I paid fourteen bucks for this thing. I got it at uh, I got it at I believe Ace, I think is where I picked this one up. Um, I've had it for a little while now, but you know, it's good and sharp. You get a good finish, and 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 it, it's sharp enough to where it works with just hand pressure. You don't you don't you don't need to chuck it up into a drill. Like I said, it's it's easy to remove metal. It's it's a whole nother story putting putting metal back, right? So all right, so right here before you, right, we got the scales. Okay, 
um, and, and we're, we're going to be blackening just kind of the inside edge of the scales here and then uh, I'm also going to touch up the screw holes here to get rid of that shininess there not that you're probably ever going to see it but but I'll know it's there so so that'll it'll make my eye twitch thinking about it so so we'll get that blackened um, we're again we're going to be using the birchwood casey brass black metal finish I have my gloves on because this has got that big giant danger it's you know poison don't don't drink a shot of it you know label on the side there so we'll be using uh we'll be wearing our nitrile gloves you know just in, just in case not not that we'll probably need them um but it it, it but you're right there danger may be fatal if uh if swallowed so so you know don't don't uh don't drink it uh before we go ahead and apply that we're just going to do a quick quick uh, uh clean up with some uh, acetone um this is my my jarro acetone here i like to use it this is one of those glass uh, apothecary jars i got it from from hobby lobby it was like two bucks right but it's extremely extremely con convenient for keeping acetone in acetone likes to evaporate um and so pouring it into glasses and stuff like that to de degrease individual parts it's getting expensive it's like 10 bucks now for like a quart can so now I just like to pour a measure of it here into this apothecary jar. The lid does a good job of sealing it up and keeping it from evaporating. Plus, it's really convenient. I can just dump the hardware in and, and swirl it around. So, so yeah. So we're just going to do a quick wipe down, degreasing. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm not 100% sure if this stuff is necessary. Um, if you ever get into any of the other metal finishes, like plum brown, uh, plum browning, and then a lot of the um, a lot of the uh, the bluing solutions for ferrous metals for like steels and stuff most of those don't require any kind of degreasing whatsoever the the acid or whatever the chemical whatever it is is in there is strong enough that it, it, it eats right through any kind of surface grease um, but but I'm not a hundred percent sure on this stuff so so we'll just do a quick wipe down um, again it's, it's in the insides of the scales no one's ever gonna see it you know but but to me you know I'll, I'll know it's there so <laughs> So we'll just do a quick wipe down clean up here with the acetone. Plus, I'm not sure if, the, if, if these guys were lacquered or anything at the factory. I, I highly doubt it because I'm not getting any lacquer off here with the acetone. But, but just in case, we want to we wanna do our part and clean it up. By the, judging by the blackness that's coming off of these guys, they're, they're not, it's not been lacquered. You know, because I'm pulling off a lot of, you know, I'm, we're, we're pulling off some of the, you know, discoloration here that brass, you know, brass will, brass acquires over time. I'm not dipping these scales because these, they do have some blackening on the front and I don't know if that's an applied finish like a paint or something. Um, and, and you know, and I don't know if he used a blackening solution like we're using right now, or if, or, or if that's painted on, and then have the high spots polished out. But I don't want to. I don't want to risk it. So, so we're just going to use a use a cotton swab applicator there and just clean it up a little bit. All right, so that should be good. And we can go ahead and start the blackening process. Um, generally, when I'm spot blackening like this, when I'm not actually applying it to the to the entire knife or the entire scale, I like to keep a paper towel just to kind of you know soak up excess from the swab, and then I essentially I'm just going to use the swab to paint it on. Um, we'll start out in the middle here, just so you can see, just so we can see the effects there. And you can see it's immediately starts turning that blackish brown color. So we'll get a good amount on there. And let's sit. And we're just darkening the scale here. We're just darkening the brass. We're not actually physically making it black. Um, you can make it black. I just for this for this for this use we don't need it. We don't need it to be that dark. We just we just want to darken it up and then I'm going to go ahead and get the edges there but you can see it already starting to turn black the chemical itself will actually turn black um, yeah just from the 
I don't think it's an oxide layer, but the, the tarnish layer, I guess, that this is causing. And like I said, we're just darkening up this brass. If we were going to be black, making this thing black, we would then uh, we would use some uh, abrasives, you know, and some polishing compound to get the the underlying surfaces as uh, as consistent as you know in coloration as possible, and then we would apply over that just just to ensure we get a good even we get a good even application. We're just but for now we're just going to paint this stuff on here and. I just don't want to be able to see any of that shiny brass from, from you know, peeking out from underneath the scales. Alright, so that's kind of how it works. I'm going to let this set and do its job, and then I'll rinse them off in the sink. And then we'll come back and uh, take a look at the, look at the finished product. Alright. All right, I'll see you in a few. And we're back. All right. So I just did one coat, and then I went and uh, scrubbed it off under uh, soap and water, and you know, use my wife's toothbrush here to get it clean. Um, if you want a, a darker color or a more consistent color with the brass blackening, it, you you do need to make sure that the surface finish is fairly even. Um, in order to get kind of an even coverage. I, I didn't care. I was using it more in the antiquing application here. I just wanted to darken the brass up somewhat, uh, knock off some of the shiny spots, and, and, and you know, that that's fine for what I'm using it for. But if you really want a dark black color, um, you'll need to apply it two or three different times to, to really get a good consistent color. And like I said, it also helps that if the surface finish is, is, is evened out. All right, so the scales came out good. That's the way it, you know, or at least they came out the way I needed them to come out. <laughs> All right, and so now we're going to move on to the uh, backspacer here. So I went ahead and coated it with a product called Dichem. Uh, Dichem is a is a is a it's a, a layout fluid. Essentially, it's a dye, and it you know puts that purpley blue color there on the, onto the metal, and then you can use a tool such as a as a as a carbide scribe to go ahead and, and, and lay out, you know, areas that you want to cut or remove or, or drill holes. But as you can see, that's the area that I've got laid out there for the, uh, that we're going to grind out. I'm going to use the uh, top roller area there on my, on my work sharp uh, with the knife grinding attachment. You know, may, maybe I'll use my rotary tool to clean it up a little bit. But I just want to grind, grind that area out. And I think that would be sufficient to give enough clearance for the blade so that way it's resting on the stop and, instead of resting on the you know the, the with the tip of the with the edge of that uh, of the tonto there this part here is is contacting that and I just want to remove that because that is starting to starting to damage the edge a little bit when I close it so you guys have seen me use the work sharp before so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and drag that thing out and get this thing ground down and then uh, rinse it off here in the in, uh, in the acetone acetone will remove dichem you know fairly well so, so you won't, you know, this isn't permanent by any means. Um, so I'll get that ground down and I'll get it washed up and then I'll bring you back to show it off. And then we'll move on to cutting the choil into the blade. And then we're going to do a, uh, a uh, re-acid uh, etch and, and stone wash and see how that comes out. I'm hoping I don't have to polish the blade out. You know, I'm hoping, I'm hoping just, you know, re-dipping it will we'll, we'll clean up the, the scratches and then you can go ahead and, and you know, put some new scratches in it with, with, with the rock tumbler, okay? All right, I'll see you in a few. All right, and we're back. All right, so we got it, uh, we got it ground out, cleaned up. Let's see if we can see that here into the camera. You can see there's no contact now between the edge of that tonto there and that, and that backspacer. We were able to grind that out and give it plenty of clearance. I also took the chance while we had everything out and I was creating a big mess. All right, I would go ahead and go ahead and cut a little little sharpening choil in there. Nothing big, just a just a little baby choil, just enough. Um, you know, sometimes you, you you do those sharpening choils, you make them a little bit bigger and more deliberate, you know, for aesthetics reasons, but but I don't think this knife really needed that. Um, so yeah, I did scrub it up with soap and water, and you can see it is kind of blotchy. So, so yeah, we are definitely going to be doing a 
doing a good long acid dip on this hopefully that'll even out the uh, even out the finish a bit on there and then uh, give it a good good long tumble we'll make sure that we get as even a finish as possible on that so uh, so yeah so it's coming along fine it's coming along good you know we'll get it dipped um, the uh, cleaning up the uh, cleaning up cleaning up here the screw holes or cleaning up the uh, the you know with the tool here it did help um, the screws are now sitting flush they're not they're not proud anymore so 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 just you know just hand turning that little countersink in there a few times was all we needed to clean those up enough to get the screws to sit down flush um, so this is going to turn out good I think uh, we did get a little bit of uh, discoloration here from the heat but fortunately it didn't reach the surface of the of the backspacer so you know there won't be any reason to re-anodize it we'll just leave it as it is no it'll you know that's on the inside of the knife that you'll hardly ever see especially with the blades folded up you know so there's i'm not going to go through all the hassle of of dipping it and etching it and then re-anodizing re it and then hoping i get the i can match it to the to the other colors i've already got so so yeah so from here i'm going to go ahead and etch it and throw it in the tumbler and then uh and then i'll bring you back when it's all done and and we're ready for the uh for the final assembly hopefully um, I have to put an edge on it and sharpen it a bit. There is some damage from where it was contacting that that backspacer there. It looks like to be there's a chip, so so I'll have to do, put some effort in there on the uh, on the prof. But we'll get it sharpened up and get it all back together, and uh, we'll bring you back. See you in a few. All right, and we're back. Well, I think it came out a lot better this time than it did the first time. I don't know what you guys think. I came out a lot more consistent, a lot less blotchy, a lot less random weird scratches. I think that came out amazing. Definitely a heck of a lot happier with it this go around. Again, nothing, nothing different. I just gave it a good soak. This time I soaked it about six and a half minutes in the ferric oxide. Then I gave it a good, probably close on 20 minutes tumble, because uh, I, I I wanted a more washed out look to it. You know, I wanted it to be more kind of that antique look like the rest of the knife. So 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 I let it run for a good while. Um, but yeah, I think it came out gorgeous. So we'll go ahead and get this guy put back together. Take a final look at it. So yeah, if you haven't been out to, uh, you know, I mean. I don't know, I guess a lot of people don't think uh, uh, Etsy as being the place to go for for knife mods, but there are a lot of there are a lot of decent decent little companies out there producing scales, you know, that that, that you can get, you know, that are available on uh, on Etsy. Um, and, you know, Wabasabi Craftworks, boy, they're definitely one of them. They're they're these are probably the most unique scales I've I've seen. Um, I don't believe there's anybody else out there doing them, you know, quite like this. I know. I mean, you've got for like for laser engraving, right? You got uh, Miton Boss does some pretty gorgeous ones. Uh, DNA lasering, uh, like you know, I've got a I've got a set on a on, a, on another knife, but uh, you know, the, the, those laser engraved ones are nice. But but this is this is a whole different level, right? This is these are hand carved brass. And I mean, they, you know, the, the depth of the carving or the engraving is, 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 you know, laser scales cannot, cannot replicate that. And these by far are, are just, they're just gorgeous scales. And for, for a small outfit, these guys, uh, uh, Wasabi is out of, uh, Indonesia, you know, to, you know, they, they are producing an amazing an amazing product man and, and and i am i am jazzed to own a set that is for sure get this guy put back together here take a final look at her really really good fit on that lanyard tube no you know not a not a chore to get back together for sure just 
really, really well done. I got tight. He's got it on slightly loose. Screws are nice and flush now. Just a little bit. go. Check out the centering. Good and solid. Get that clip put back on. The clip on this guy is tip up, right hand only. Um, it didn't have a bunch of screw holes drilled all over it for for different positions, but I'm sure if you ask, they can, he can do this in any orientation you'd let, you know. If you want it tipped down left-handed, I'm, I'm sure if you ask nicely. Javier can can make it happen. Again, like I said, they're very very pleasant purchasing process, man. They sent me they sent me a lot of in progress pictures so I could kind of see how the scales were coming along, uh, you know, coming together. Um, you know, really good communications. Uh, not sure if English is a second language or they you just got a really good Google Translate, but never had any issues or uh, misunderstandings with them so so yeah I would definitely definitely buy with confidence All right. so again we'll just run down on the parts and what we did so this was a blade HQ exclusive Tonto PM2 and S30V. We've got the we've got the wasabi scales here. We've got flytanium uh, all flytanium hardware. Uh, Rips Garage Tech pocket clip. Some unnamed cheap backspacer. Both of which were modified by me. And all the titanium. And I, I anodized all the titanium hardware to match. All right. She's, she's a hefty girl, that's for sure, but boy, it's a nice knife. Give you one quick last look, and we'll sign off and we'll get this done. Alright. Alright, guys, I appreciate you guys coming along with me tonight watching me kind of remod an older mod uh, as my skills kind of improved you know it's nice to be able to go back and and fix and change some things that my skill set didn't allow me to do just you know just a year or so ago or a few years ago um, so take a look at some of them knives you know if you're not happy with them you know redo it you know it's kind of nice not tonight to discover that that you could I could redip a blade that I wasn't happy with and and without even noticing you know that that it was dipped prior, I didn't have to. I didn't have to sand the blade back or polish it back. It, it, it just worked out well on its own. Um, I've got a lanyard I made for this. I'm kind of on the fence with lanyards. Not a not a huge fan, but but uh, you know I kind of wanted to do one for this guy. Uh, it's got a couple of jade beads. It's got a phoenix uh, a bead. I kind of like the phoenix and the and then the you know the the, the skeleton here. But uh, I'll keep it on there for now. It's not again not my favorite. Not my favorite, not a lanyard guy, but, but, you know, I guess if there's 
one knife that's going to be slightly over the top and have all the bells and whistles. This is the one. So we'll get that put on here so you guys can check it out, see what you think. So yeah, I kind of didn't go over, you know, a lot of the techniques tonight. Um, I kind of did a bunch of them in the prior video, but if there's anything you guys would like explained better or you'd like to see me demonstrate, I've got no problems doing a video. If you just want to do a video watching me acid wash and stone wash a blade, then 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 we'll do it. If you you know, then uh, then yeah, I'm gonna probably we'll probably do a titanium video here pretty soon. Um, you know, I've, I've I've got a nice setup here for doing titanium. Um, and, and, and I'll kind of show you the process on that. It's, it's a hell of a lot cleaner than, than uh, acid etching and stone washing is. So a little bit more jars are involved, but, but definitely a, a, a cleaner process. But, uh, but yeah, let me know down in the comments, man, if there's something you guys like, like, like to see me do. Even if it's like you want to see me sharpen, right? I hate watching sharpening videos. I think it's the most boring thing on the planet. But if you want to watch me grind away over there with my uh, TS Prof... Uh, cadet nero then then by all means who am i to who am i to uh get in the way and I'll, I'll be more than happy to do a video on it and then i'll you know i'll explain my my uh grit progression and 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 what i'm feeling for before i move on and 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 yeah I and mean, that's always a possibility but uh so so hopefully the uh the usps here is promising me that they have the rest of my materials are within the united states and i should have them in the next couple of days so so maybe we'll get a video out earlier than the weekend, you know, because I kind of owe you guys another one there on the rat, or on the rat too, and uh, and and yeah, we'll get them done. But uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys watching tonight, and uh, wish you all a good evening. And uh, this is the the regular guy and his regular guy knife channel. And we're signing out.